On today's episode of Flyby History, we travel to the city of Kalamazoo, Michigan. The area on which the modern city of Kalamazoo stands was once home to Native Americans of the Hopewell tradition, who migrated into the area sometime before the first millennium. Evidence of their early residency remains in the form of a small mound in downtown Bronson Park. The Hopewell civilization began to decline after the 8th century and was replaced by other groups. The Potawatomi culture lived in the area when the first European explorers arrived. During the War of 1812, the British established a smithy and a prison camp in the area. The 1821 Treaty of Chicago ceded the territory south of the Grand River to the United States federal government. However, the area around present-day Kalamazoo was reserved as the village of Potawatomi chief Mach E.B. Nashiwish. Six years later, as a result of the 1827 Treaty of St. Joseph, the tract that became the city of Kalamazoo was also ceded. In 1829, Titus Bronson, originally from Connecticut, became the first white settler to build a cabin within the present city limits of Kalamazoo. He planted the town in 1831 and named it the village of Bronson. Not to be confused as the much smaller Bronson, which is about 50 miles south of Kalamazoo. Bronson, who was frequently described as eccentric and argumentative, was later run out of town, and the village was renamed Kalamazoo in 1836. This was due in part to Bronson being fined for stealing a cherry tree. Those folks from Michigan sure do love their cherries. In 1883, Kalamazoo was legally incorporated as a city. The fertile farmlands attracted prosperous Yankee farmers who settled the surrounding area and sent their sons to Kalamazoo to become businessmen, professionals, and entrepreneurs who started numerous factories. Most of the original settlers of Kalamazoo were New Englanders, or were from upstate New York. In the 1940s, the city became the first to install curb cuts, and in 1959, the city created the Kalamazoo Mall, the first outdoor pedestrian shopping mall in the United States. The mall was designed by Victor Gruen, who also designed the country's first enclosed shopping mall, which had opened three years earlier. Two of the mall's four blocks were reopened to auto traffic in 1999 after much debate. In the past, Kalamazoo was known for its production of windmills, mandolins, buggies, automobiles, cigars, stoves, paper, and paper products. Agriculturally, it was once noted for celery. Kalamazoo was the original home of Gibson Guitar Corporation, which spawned the still local Heritage Guitar. The company was incorporated as Gibson Mandolin Guitar Company Limited on October 11th of 1902 by the craftsman Orville Gibson. One budget model was named the Gibson Kalamazoo Melody Maker Electric Guitar. Operations were gradually moved from Kalamazoo to Memphis and Bozeman, Montana in the 80s. Some workers from the original factory stayed in Kalamazoo to create the Heritage Guitar Company. Kalamazoo was also headquarters to the Checkers Motor Company, the former manufacturer of the Checker Cab, which also stamped sheet metal parts for other auto manufacturers. Checkers closed in June of 2009, a victim of the late 2000s recession. All is not lost for Kalamazoo, as the Stryker Corporation calls Kalamazoo home, and the largest manufacturing site in Pfizer's network is located in Kalamazoo. The Public Research University, Western Michigan University, is located in Kalamazoo. It was initially established as Western State Normal School in 1903. In 1957, G. Menon Williams signed a bill into law that made Western a university and gave the school its current name of Western Michigan University. If you liked this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching Fly by History.